you know, tartan never disappoints. It's just so beautiful. Hi everyone, it's Evelyn and it's an exciting time of year. Look, the dailies are blooming and it's only really the middle of July. I mean, I struggle so hard to get dailies to bloom this early in the season, but with all the weird weather we've been having, it wasn't a struggle this year at all. Let's get into a tour of the dahlia beds and see what's happening. So here's the dahlia beds. There's Esri rolling around on the uh, grass. She just had water park and uh, she's drying herself off. But this first bed here, I've got my golden torch ball dahlias blooming. They're really pretty. They have a really soft pale tangerine color. I got these this year new to replace my Boom Boom Yellow, which I wasn't excited about because it had an unbelievably sideways tilt to its head, but they were a pure yellow. This is not, this is more of a tangerine. So I might have to get some more Boom Boom Yellow again or look for another ball dahlia that's just a pure yellow. Beside this row of the, uh, I've already forgot what it's called, whatever it's called. <laughs> um, golden Torch, that's it, Golden Torch. There's the dog bulb. Beside that is a little patch of Wanda's Aurora, which tends to, it's a bit shorter. It's a four foot one. It's not quite up to its full height yet. It tends to bloom a little later. That's okay, because it has more of an autumnal color to it. Beside that, and this little pathway that goes to our driveway, and Esri, where's Leela? I don't know, there she is, oh, she's up on the porch. This row here is just starting to get into bud. That's Lindsay Michelle. But on the other side of this path, I also have a row of Lindsay Michelle. And the first one is opening. Isn't that pretty? That's so beautiful. Oh look, Esri's got her ball on the other side of the driveway gate. She can't get it from there. Let's just walk over. Oh, she is getting it. Look at that. She's just hauled it out from me back there. Anyway, back to here. Oh, there's Leela. So, Beside Lindsay Michelle, we have uh, quite a few Wanda's Capella, which is a pure yellow one. And here's one of them that's just opened up. I've already uh, sold a few of these. Actually, I already sold a, a few of the uh, Golden Torch as well. Amid, in, in amongst them, I have poppies blooming. Down here, what's this one? I'm just going to go check. Hang on. I have all the uh, dahlias on my plan. Oops. So I have to check my plan to see uh, the names of some of them because I don't remember. I know the names of most of them, but I don't remember what I planted where necessarily yet because they're only just starting to bloom. So that one was Papagino. Now let's get back to the tour. Okay, so we have Papagino down here. That's the one that's very similar to Wanda's Aurora, which were the uh, slightly shorter ones in that bed over there. But it has a more browner tone in its sleeve and Wanda's Aurora has a bit more of an um, orangey tone in its sleeve with the same yellow. Now one thing I wanted to show you down here, to keep the dahlias healthy, even with the poppies, I go in here, as you can see, I peel off all the bottom leaves. And I've been doing, I, as I peel them all off, I dig a little trench and I do some direct composting with the kitchen scraps. And then I put the leaves that I peeled off in there. And that's what this is. This is just a little pad with a pot of rocks on top of the last spot that I did my kitchen scraps in. So now let's whoa, swing around and go into this first center bed, which I've got here on my plan. And I have to look at it to remind myself what everything is. Some of them I know off by heart. So this little row here at the end of this plan is my French Louis Mayers. Now they're a shorter one, which is why I have them along the edge. And they're not a dinner plate, but they are a really, really pretty, stunning yellow dahlia. At the front of this bed, I have it looks like I have three. Is that what I have? I have, yep, three labyrinths. So these three labyrinths, this one's just starting to open. It will get bigger. 
I have that plant, this plant, this one, and this one. And as you can see, look at all the buds. I mean, it's absolutely loaded with buds. It's such a prolific bloomer. Beside that, I have two pens gift, which are a little smaller in size. They have some buds on them. I really should pinch two of these buds off and just leave the one. And this pen's gift has quite a few buds on it as well. It's a giant pink one. And then beside that in the front, I have three Wanda's Aurora. You know what? I lied. Back here, beside the Golden Torch, that's not Wanda's Aurora. That's where I had Wanda's Aurora last year. That's Encore. I love Encore. But it's, it is definitely a short dahlia, so that's why it's lower. And now that I'm looking at it, I'm seeing that it's got buds on it. Buds gonna happen there. Buds gonna happen there. No, it's, it's, it's getting ready to, um, to bud up. It seems to have a little bit of chlorophyll issues. The other dahlias don't, but the Encore does. Don't know why. Still looks healthy. But anyway, that's Encore. Sorry about that. Back to this bed that has the labyrinth. And then the Pen's Gift. And then the Wanda's Aurora. So behind Wanda's Aurora, I have a row of AC Ben. Because there's four rows in this bed. And the AC Bens are also budding up, as you can see here. It is actually quite a beautiful orange color when it's open. Behind the AC Ben are nine AC Loomis. And then behind that, I have one Penn Hill Watermelon and seven Spartacus. Let's walk over there and see. Now this AC Loomis actually does have a bit of bug damage on it, so I probably won't use this one. <coughs> Excuse me, but I've cut quite a few of the AC Loomis already. I love AC Loomis with its See how the underside of the leaves are really quite white and that little Usually it has more than that as a white tip. It has quite a bit of white frosting on its tips. This one does not There's another one getting ready to open. There's a bud getting ready to open That one's getting ready to open. This one's not far behind they may be blooming like crazy. So here we have some Spartacus that are getting ready to open. Spartacus is a really, really deep, solid red. It's really quite beautiful. There's another one. So that's down along here. At the end of this bed, I have one AC Loomis. And then tucked in here, not doing too well, is one... Oh, I've forgotten what that's called. Let me go look at my plan again. Hang on. Okay, so that little guy down there, that's called Penn Hill Watermelon. It's a lot like Labyrinth. Um, I only had one tuber of it. The tuber was a little iffy, but because I only had the one tuber of it, I wanted to plant it anyway. But it's clearly growing at a very, very short pace. That doesn't mean I won't get tubers from it. I may not get much in the way of flowers but I may get a good batch of tubers from it for next year because that happened to me with my um, um, Papaginos. I had one year only one tuber that really made it through the winter and it wasn't that great to begin with, but I planted it and it produced good tubers, although only one flower. And then, then I had tubers for the following year. So I sacrificed the spot in the Dahlia garden for the one not so healthy plant but it was putting its energy into producing tubers which then did really well the next year so for me that worked out really well anyway let's get on to the tour of the other center bed i'll put up a, a picture of the map so you can see where we're moving to now okay so this bed has less blooming and what we have on the front row here is ac big johnson which is kind of a cross between yellow and orange, um, not quite orange, not quite yellow, and it's really quite beautiful, but it's really good for the fall. And then in the row behind that, 
I have Park M. It's got buds on it, but it too isn't blooming. Oh, wait a minute. Here's an AC Ben that's starting to uh, open up. Cool. And here it's got another bud on that plant that's starting to open and some more buds there. So they're not going to be uh, too far behind from blooming. Park M has buds. Plants are quite small. That's one that I call it Park M, E-M for me, Evelyn M, because they were all Park Princess and for whatever reason the tubers reverted back to one of its original parent plants and I don't know what it is. Um, so it's, it's an interesting tuber. It's, it has beautiful pink flowers last year. We'll see what it does this year. So the row behind that is Keith H, which is a water lily decorative dahlia. And I think that's my second bloom that I can cut from as soon as it's finished opening properly. It's quite gorgeous. And that's that whole row. It's prolific too. There's a uh, couple more that are just getting ready to open there. And then on the back row, I have, what have I got here? I got five Panora Mac B and three Bodacia. So let's swing around there. Five Canora Mac B. So that would be those two, which don't look the same as that one. So maybe there's an error in my tubers there. We'll find out. The Canora Mac Bs, here's the other three. Again, buds, but not open. I actually have cut one of these. It's a very, very dark red as well. Bodacious is a gorgeous, fiery one that's quite prolific. It's got lots of buds on it, but uh, not blooming as well either. So that's this center bed. We just did that center bed. And of course we did the two yellow beds there. We're now gonna swing around and do this bed, which is the bed on the north of our property up against our concrete fence that acts like a retaining wall because the land dropped it down and I wanted to fill it in with soil to turn it into a bed. But in order to do that, we needed something behind it, like a fence that would hold all the soil and these concrete panels have done a good job of doing that. So let's go over there. By the way, if you're enjoying this video, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe if you haven't. It really does help the algorithm with my channel. Also, if you have any questions or comments, leave them down below and I'll be sure to get back to you. Now let's get back to the north bed. First, if you've been here before, you'll notice all the cascading lace hydrangeas are all gone and so all the brambles that were reaching over, which were actually creating a nice hood of shade to my sweet peas here, which have slowed down a bit because they're in a little bit of shock as to how much sun is coming on them right now. But they're still producing, so that's good. Hopefully they'll adjust to the extra amount of sun they're getting and be fine with that. But down uh, this part of this, what I call the purple bed, which is also the north bed, I have a lot of Edinburgh, which is also a decorative dahlia. It's not a ball dahlia as far as I know, but it has kind of a bit of a ball look. It's got that same sort of white frosting on the tips that um, AC Loomis has. It's really, really pretty. I love it. I have quite a few of it. That tuber was given to me by one of my customers, so that was very nice of her. She also gave me the, uh, a, the original tuber for all of my Keith H. Water Lily dahlias here. So whenever I look at those, I think of her. In between the sweet peas and the dahlias, I had, have, I had and have lots of poppies growing and all of these pods are slowly getting cut and used. Beside the Edinburgh, we have, well, there's two Thomas Edison here which are not opening. It's a purple yet. It's a purple dahlia. It's full of buds, but there's no... Is that one? That might be one. No, no flowers on that one yet. And then beside that is tartan. Tartan is just a stunner. It's so beautiful. This would be... I've cut one, one so far, so this would be the second flower. This will be the third one opening up here. And um, I forgot to mention, I've actually cut quite a few of these Edinburghs 
This is what they look like when they start to open. Yeah, definitely cut quite a few of those. Those are usually one of the earliest ones to bloom, as is the AC Loomis, which is interesting because they both have a bit of a similar look. So next to the tartan, we have Purple Wave, which is, I'll get my shadow out of there. I just love to, it's a decorative dahlia. It's not a dinner plate, but it's just a stunning color. And it's got the purple leaves on it as well. I just love it. Even in the bud form, I love it the way it looks. It's so cool. I've definitely been cutting off this already. Here's another one of them back here. Yeah, really, really like those. Beside Purple Wave, I have Addison June, which is a ball dahlia, but it's a mini ball dahlia, as you can see here. If I put my fingers on either side of that little mini ball, how tiny it is, isn't it? But it's quite cute. So like, for instance, in the uh, bouquets, the black button bachelor buttons that I put in there high for that little pop of purple, these kind of do the same thing. So as the bachelor buttons finish for the season, these Addison June sort of take their place. There's another one that's opening up. I've cut one so far only. And that's this bed. We're now going to go to the bed that's closest to the street. I'll put a picture of the plant up again so you can see what I'm talking about. And it's mainly where I have bald dahlias. So just beside the bed with the bald dahlias in it, and here's these three steps that Leela and Ezra can go up to the fence. I have just tucked in here a snow princess because I had a tuber, an extra tuber, so I thought I'd put it there. And I've done the same thing on the other side of these three steps that Leela and Ezra have to go up to the path. There is a snow princess in here somewhere too. Ah, there it is, right here. And I won't be cutting off those for bouquets because they're cactus dahlias and they have absolutely no vase life whatsoever. But I had the tubers and I had those two spots, so I put them there. So what I have in this ball dahlia bed is I have a row at the back of Petra's wedding. Can you see how prolific it is? And I've, I've cut quite a few of it. It's just absolutely prolific. And this is what it looks like. I love it. It's beautiful. Well, you can get really nice long stems out of it if you cut if you cut the side buds off of it. Just stunning. And like I said, so prolific. I mean, I cut all of Petra's wedding off of here yesterday. And look how many more I have already. There's a one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight open. And then a whole pile more that will be open for tomorrow morning. Really, really good producer. This one, in front of it, is called Wizard of Oz. I've cut from these. This one's not open. I'll put a picture up that I that I took from my garden. All the pictures I'm putting up of the dailies are ones I took from my garden so that you can see what it looks like open. I've got two that should be open tomorrow. It's really very, very pretty. There's a row of them, and oh look, see there's Esri up on her step, and she's put her ball outside, and now she's going to get her ball back in, playing with herself. <laughs> anyway, there's a row of them in here. This is the tallest one. The other ones are still shorter. It might be because they're a little bit shaded out. Um, I maybe should have put them in the front row, because these ones look like they grew taller faster than the Wizard of Oz. And these ones are marble ball. Now here's an interesting thing. This is a marble ball. This plant produces nothing but solid purple. Now this one has just a little tiny piece of white on it. I've cut from this before. There is no real white showing in this plant. This is what it's supposed to look like, the plant next to it. And this one always produces these. So I'm going to have to label this one marble ball solid purple because this is what it's supposed to look like. I don't mind because that just gives me another look to increase and in plant in my in my dahlia beds. Here's another one that's going solid purple. Oh look it's got like one little white one. Interesting. So of the four that I have planted here, two of them are solid purple. This one 
has the marbling that it's supposed to have. This one hasn't opened up yet. We'll see what, what happens. This one looks like it, if you look at it real close, it looks like it's got, might be more marbling. Huh. We shall see. Although this one that has no marbling looks pretty much like that one. So who knows? <laughs> so that's the ball dahlia bed. So now what we're going to do is a little bit of an experiment. I have four dahlia pots left from selling. We're going to dump a couple of them. As you just put your ball in my lap. Did you? Because I'm sitting on the ground. See, I'm sitting on the ground. <laughs> Um, we're going to dump a couple of the pots and see what the root systems look like now that it's mid-July. I think that'll be an interesting experiment to see what they look like. I'm going to sacrifice two of those pots because it's a dahlia that I don't want to grow again. It does not have good vase life. I was selling them all off for people to buy and put in their gardens, but I do have two left. So there will be a good sacri sacrifice for for the good of the Dahlia World's experimentation. Don't you think, Esri? Don't you think, Esri? <laughs> okay, so let's, I'm gonna flip you around so that uh, you can see me dump it. That's just so pretty. You're just such a pretty dog. <laughs> okay, let's carry on. Okay, so here's a pot of the AC Loomis. It's labeled, oh sorry, not AC Loomis, La Luna. Yeah, that's what I was dumping. So let's dump it out. With this one handed. One day I'll have enough equipment so that I don't have to do everything one handed. Knock off the soil off of it. So there you go, you can see. Hold it up to the light here. You can see this would be the tuber that I planted because it's bigger. But look at all the, uh, besides the, oops, pulling it off camera. Look at all the new tubers growing on that. That's kind of interesting. Yeah. Maybe I'll get the hose. Hang on, I'm going to go get the hose and hose it off so you can see it better. Okay, got the hose here. Let's hose this guy off. Here we go, flip to the other side. Now we can get a much better look at this. So we have, you can already tell, aside from the fact that this is the bigger one, because they get bigger, the mother tuber, which is the one that you have planted, they also get darker. All the new tubers are a lighter color than the mother tuber. So when I store my tubers, I cut off and discard the mother tuber because it's spent. It may get um, a branch with one or two blossoms on it, but for the most part, it's spent and it won't do well at all. But all the other new tubers, which are so easy to identify by their color, are the ones that will perform. So you can see even now, this has a good one, two, three new tubers growing along with the mother tuber, which is the fourth. Yeah, pretty, uh, pretty good. Okay, let's dump the other La Luna and see how that one's doing. Okay, so let's grab the other La Luna. Oh, apparently we're dropping a ball in here as well because Ezri's right there. <laughs> so here's the other La Luna. Let's just that one dump easier. Get the soil off of that. Let's take the hose to it. Well, this one doesn't have as much tuber development. We have Again, clearly the mother tuber here, and then the light ones are the new tubers. There's one there, which is a decent size. Sorry, which all this stuff belongs to. And then here's the beginning of another one. So that one isn't quite as a long 
as the first one with its tubers. Interesting experiment. Well, let's pick up the ball and throw it down the driveway for Esri. Well, I hope you enjoyed this week's video. I've moved back in, uh, I'm actually sitting on the landing of our steps to go up to our deck and I grabbed a pot of sunflowers because they're so pretty. You can see my red ones. I love the red ones here. Let me just pull it out and hold it. Maybe not that one. There's another one in here. So there it is. Let's see what we They're just so pretty. Look at that. Isn't that stunning? Put my face there so you can see it. The red sunflowers are just so beautiful. Still haven't seen the lemon chiffon. No sign of that yet. Or any of the double quick, which are the full headed ones. All pro cuts. Anyway, I thought I'd sit here with my little bucket of uh, sunflowers because I have them and they're pretty. It's uh, next week. We're going to go over, now that it's summer, what my recipe is of flowers that I put in the flower wagon. So stay tuned for that. That should be pretty interesting. I know my flower wagon video has been one of my most popular ones that I've done so far this year. So I hope that all of you who really enjoyed that video will find this video really useful as well. I, maybe I should have done recipes through the um, spring season as well for what I put in the flower wagon. I'll do that next year. But I uh, hope you really enjoyed this video. And until next week, don't forget to like, don't forget to sus subscribe, and please leave a comment. I'm going to put these sunflowers down, and I'm going to let Ezri say goodbye too, because of course, as always, oh, she's just, she just dropped her ball behind me. Where are you? Where are you, Ezri? Can I see you somewhere? Oh, her ball is underneath the table that the sunflowers are on, so we won't. We won't make her say goodbye. She's trying to get her ball. But anyway, oh, here comes Leela. See, I'm never going to get going because all the dogs are coming up here. Maybe Leela will want to say goodbye. Leela, you want to say goodbye? You guys want to say goodbye? There's Leela. There's Edry. We're both going to put the gate shut there because I had our uh, car inside the property on the driveway. So when we open the driveway gate, we always close the gate on, on our deck and close the front door and keep the dogs inside so they don't accidentally get out onto our road, which is busy because we don't want them to get hit by a car. Anyway, enough of that. We'll see you guys next week. Bye.